Yeah, um, so now I've been officially selected and uh, it feels amazing. This will be my second Paralympic Games. Um, but this time now I've got three years of preparation behind me. So there's a few, been a few injuries here and there along the way, um, but yeah, nothing big ever comes easy. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, Kobe was the first competition of the year. So I was going in, into it with more nerves than I normally have because I didn't have any competitions before that to kind of warm up. But um, we got there, it was a bit sketchy at first, but the last final throw, I managed to get the 66-96, which ultimately won me the, uh, the second world title. My name is Philippa Loftus and I am the Health and Fitness Customer Service Manager here at Hereford Leisure Centre. So we've helped, helped support Dan in his journey by um, setting up a GLL Sports Foundation membership for him. Uh, we installed a throwing wall, um, we got some jerk blocks and we are as friendly and, as, and encouraging as we can be when he comes in. We're incredibly proud of Dan's achievements. Um, we love having him here at the centre. We feel really honoured to have such a legend here training at our centre with us. Um, anyone who knows Dan knows what a lovely guy he is. He's incredibly humble, um, just great fun to be around and always so friendly and sociable with the customers. So yeah, go Dan. It's a strange thing because uh, when I go to the Paralympic Games, we get um, pushed together as a team. But those people on the team, I don't see them day in, day out. The people that I see day in, day out are the staff at Halo, the members at Halo, all giving me encouragement. And so the, the days where I feel pretty, pretty tired, you know, and I see other people training hard, it really inspires me. So um, thank you very much to everyone at Halo and the members um, for spurring me on. And let's hope you can spur me on in Paris as well. So um, I'm visually impaired. I'm a visually impaired athlete and I have a condition called retinitis pigmentosa. And um, basically, um, my eyesight deteriorates over time, like over a short amount of time, and it affects my peripheral vision, so the vision around my central. And at the moment now, I have around about 10% left of my vision, which when you're looking at me, you wouldn't really see that. So it's quite an invisible disability. Um, and to be honest, I'm not sure how it affects my sport because I've adapted with my eyesight as it's deteriorated. So when I first got into para athletics, I really didn't understand why I was there because I don't know any, anything different. I don't know what it is like to see with, you know, 90% more of my vision. So um, maybe it affects my peripheral, um, my proprioception um, in that way, uh, but who knows? But I'm here doing my best and, and throwing as far as I can. So um, being diagnosed with something like a condition like I was when I was quite young or having a disability can sometimes feel quite um, limiting. But the way that I have kind of approached my life is that, you know, my eyesight, I mean, I've only had 10% of my vision now, but it wasn't always like that. It was deteriorating through time. And um, that made me really go after the things that I wanted to achieve. And so, yeah, it really, um, for me, acted like a catalyst to make sure that I do all those things that I wanted to do. And by doing that, it taught me the skills to be able to cope with life and big challenges. So if you feel like you can't do something, make small little steps towards that goal. You know, whether it means, you know, simply just going to the gym, for example, you know, and just being in that environment, going there for 10 minutes, to, to make yourself feel a bit more comfortable and not, not too overwhelmed, that would be a great step um, to, yeah, fulfill your life a little bit more than you are right now. Uh, we've already managed to get the gold in, um, in Kobe, uh, the World Championships, so let's hope we can match it again in Paris.